Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. Um, you know, it's funny how I get advice from fans of other teams. I ended up having, um, I, I just got back here. Yeah, from working on this roof and things and going to the dump and stuff, take a little break. And I'm reading a, a comment on, on X um, from Dan. He said, honestly, you need to stop being a fanboy. It's like you like the quarterback more than you like the team. And I'm a Niners fan. I'm just being honest with you. Can't pay a quarterback that much money who hasn't even gotten to a championship game. I'm sorry, Mark. I just watched your video, and you're wrong. Dak Prescott is the highest-paid quarterback in the league, and he's not worth that money. He's ruined your team from getting better players. It's all Dak's fault. Too greedy. And that's I appreciate you telling me how to live my life, and that that's great. I appreciate that. Um, but see, I look at it a little bit differently here. Because I look at it from the standpoint of saying the Cowboys front office had two jobs. Two jobs. I think we could all agree that being 14th and running the football is not good enough when it comes to winning in football. I think we can look at that and say that running does help your team. And when you say that, you know, Dak Prescott has prevented the Cowboys from getting other players, what's prevented the Cowboys from getting other players is Jerry and Steven Jones because they don't believe in getting other players. I don't understand the Cowboys front office of being scared little bitches. They are scared to make a move and that everything they do is about being familiar with somebody. See, here's the thing that I look at right now. If you take GMs across the NFL, Jerry Jones by far is the oldest at 82. The next oldest is Loomis in New Orleans at 66. There's one guy at 60, but pretty much everybody else is a 30 or 40 something. Jerry Jones skews the number probably by a year. The average age is 47 and a half. 47 and a half. Think about that for a second. Should grandpa be trying to run an organization or build a team? Do we look at this and say maybe some of these things have passed him by? that maybe at 82, you're not quite as sharp as you used to be. Because I know I'm 59, and I ain't as sharp as I was at 47. So I can't imagine like what I'm going to be at 82. I can't imagine what I'm going to be at 82. Even with coaching, you look at coaches now, the average age is like 45. And Mike McCarthy is 60. Mike Zimmer is 68 that this familiarity of Cowboys going back to Mike Zimmer, a guy that they used to have as a coach, as opposed to trying somebody different, younger, who might be able to relate with the players, might make a difference. Because you can blame Dak Prescott for all the problems, and, and everybody will. But you can't go from having the 14th running attack to literally being the worst There are 31 teams that are running the football better than the Dallas Cowboys. Now, I could look and say, um, when I look at the Eagles right now, I don't know that they're a three-win team without Saquon Barkley. I really don't. I, I, honestly, I don't. I look at Kansas City and say, without Pacheco last year, in that Super Bowl game, they're not winning that Super Bowl. 
as I look at teams that are balanced, they're performing better. And I'm going to say, without Christian McCaffrey on your team, you're not doing well. Now, here's the other flip side of this. We were 16th last year stopping the run. 16th. And we said, Dan Quinn sucks. Dan Quinn left and said, basically, they're not giving me the tools to succeed. That's literally what he said. Tomorrow's not promised. So you have to take chances today, which the Cowboys aren't willing to. And I don't want to hear because (laughs) Dak Prescott's, you know, the highest paid. Take a look around the league. Take a look around the league and look at the cap numbers. First four years, a grand total of $5 million was spent on Dak Prescott. Instead of looking about Dak Prescott and saying, well, damn, they're paying Dak Prescott. And that's the reason why they can't get anybody else. How about the fact that we're paying $4 million to Michael Gallup this year and $8 million next year? How about the fact that we ended up having, you know, a $5 million dead money hit last year on Zeke, another $5 million dead money hit this year, plus a salary, plus a salary for this year. How about those things? How about we look and we talk about Terrence Steele's contract where he got an $82 million extension. How about Trey Lance? That's $5 million. Got to say that Dak Prescott, in the grand scheme of all those other people who have gotten paid, Dak is about the only one that's done anything of note. Runner-up MVP last year with not exactly the same kind of talent that Brock Purdy had. And an organization that literally says, you're going to do more with less. You're going to do more with less. You can try and blame Dak Prescott and say he's the reason. But if you honestly have a wide receiver, your number one guy, who wasn't there for training camp and is running lazy routes, how's that the quarterback's fault? When you have the worst running attack in football and you can't use pay action, how is that the quarterback's fault? He's doing the best he can with what he has. And he's got less than pretty much anybody else out there. Oh, and I won't even get into the offensive line. So you can blame and say, oh, Dak Prescott. It, let's say hypothetically, his number was $10 million less. Let's say he took $50 million, which would still be low on the totem pole. Are you telling me that $10 million less from Dak Prescott would make a difference on this team right now? Is that what you're trying to tell me? $10 million? Okay, I got it. Maybe that $10 million there and Zeke's $5 million every year and, and maybe Michael Gallup's money. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, and mind you, the Cowboys have $21 million in cap space right now. And the Cowboys have triggers with Dak Prescott's contract and CeeDee Lamb's that they can just convert – on paper, the salary to signing bonus and gain all kinds of cap space. It's not a matter of they can't. It's more a matter of they won't. There you have it, people. All right. Now I'm arguing with the 49er fan. I just hope the Cowboys find a way to kick their teeth in. So I won't have to listen to them for the rest of the season. Peace out.